Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today we're going to be revisiting the cable script that I made. I've been maintaining it since I created it, so everyone has functional cables. Uh, however, I did notice that there's a little bit of confusion on how to set them up, so I'll be covering how to do that. I did improve the script a little bit, so it doesn't require as many procedures but uh, it's pretty much uh, refined as best as it can be for the, at least the moment from what we have until we have like block states or something like that. Now, with that being said, I do have a PDF file that you can find in the new download. So there is a whole bunch of stuff uh, regarding Forge Energy, mainly the energy system for the cables themselves. So you can find all the required components to make the cables set up so you need to make sure that all your cables have that and then there's basically a description of what the each parts are controlling and then we have our different models so and basically a description on what those models are for and you know some general tips and stuff for actually cross mod compatibility there's also the tag uh, cable block tag which goes into detail what that's for I will be covering all this today as well. So, and then there's the var MBT variables, which we will cover in just like when we get to that point. And then we have the modular size system for how much energy we can actually send. This should allow mods to have better compatibility between each other if they use the same thing now, like the same values for transporting energy and stuff. So we have different classes, which are from A to G. Uh, you can basically use a capacity. We'll be going with a 64 bit or 64 tick um, actual uh, capacity or battery capacity would be 64,000 which is pretty high in general and then we can basically if we wanted to later on we can downgrade the energy into a G class uh, for G class cables or we can upgrade it from a F class to a E class which is 256 if we can merge four cables into one. So there's some different options that we can basically go with a transformer system for the input. But for the moment, what we're going to be doing is just making a simple class uh, F system. And then there's also some examples of material names uh, down here below and some en generator ideas as well as energy machine ideas. There's a whole bunch that I came up with there and some other ideas which are mainly the transformers. Later on um, I will basically cover a few other things but at the moment this is what I have for you guys today. So let's go ahead into the workspace. I'm going to be importing the Forge cables into Tales of Biomes. Now I wanted to add eventually Forge energy blocks into Tales of Biomes the mod for the lore series. So this would kind of double as a double tutorial, I guess, because I don't need to do this again later on. But if we go into our blocks, um, we'll have a put our blocks under there. And then we, we have to do is actually import. And if we go to our the files that are provided, there's models and then JSON. And then you need to import all these models. Uh, once you've done that, uh, make sure to link up the texture provided for the UV map. This will allow you to make sure those models are textured properly. And as long as you texture it in the same position, like the same location, it, you can basically texture it however you want. You can also use these models as a template as there's a block state or block bench model uh, saves as well. So you can do that. Once you've imported it all, uh, if you go with an extra capacity, you can always add a namespace uh, or a variable. So we could just go with A for this one, for an example, and clicking on that, it would basically make an instance of that cable. So we can do that if we wanted to. In this case, we're not going to. I uh, have the model set up for a low capacity, so we're good to go for that part. Once you have your models imported, what we can do is we can go to our blocks and then I'm going to go to forge and then cables. It doesn't need to be under a specific folder system for you, but I try to keep this inventory um, like the, the workspace a little bit organized because it is open source. I'm going to go ahead and create a block and then we'll get started with that. So I'm going to go low 
capacity cable and then we'll go ahead with the letter n so we know which model that we're going to go with now when you're doing this um, there's a couple things that you want to take in consideration uh, when you're setting up your cables it's easier to go from down uh, basically from the top to the right and then down to the bottom so basically like this and then like that and then like this and then all these three and then those ones and those until you get to s so the reason why this is easier is it's going to be structured in your workspace for searching and you'll be able to easily find things so i'm going to move this over to the side here and we're just going to call this one n so we know this is our basically no connection model which is really important for our placement and stuff so we're going to go ahead and select that we're actually going to copy that for the time being because we're going to need to create a whole bunch of blocks after this with the variable for n changed so create that block make sure to copy the name so it's a little bit easier and we're going to go ahead and select our in model for this one so after you've imported your models and set up your textures you should be able to uh, set the model up here and then you want to set the texture for that once you've done that go back to the rotation and make sure that it's on down up north south west east rotation rotation from player side so this one right here and that will make sure that the cable rotations are all set up for the script so the script already takes in consideration all the different rotations and stuff like that it saves so much more time the the models that i've modeled are only just singular models they wouldn't cover all the rotations if they didn't have this particular setting so make sure that this is set up um now if you're going with if you want your cables to be water loggable and then you want to check these two boxes down here but make sure that you have your model on cutout this is required in order for the the block to actually work um, now the other thing that you might want to consider is making a texture for your item so it has a item texture you can basically import that here and it will set up your texture for when you place it it'll just look a little bit better than just a solid uh, cube as well so once you've done that, um, you want to go to the bounding boxes and click the generate from block models. This will automatically set up the thing. You'll have to do this for each model type that you set up. Properties, we can just clean up this name so it's under low capacity cable. That will save a lot of time for translation and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we're going to set our material to iron. You can set it to whatever you want. And I'm going to make sure that it's under the same block tab. All these other uh, settings are basically uh, com can be configured to however you want. Uh, there isn't really anything on this page that you need to worry about. But I am going to set the cloth for the texture or the sound just because it sounds like the old industrial craft texture for the or sounds for the, the blocks themselves. And um, I'm going to also set the pickaxe for the actually we could go with an axe for basically breaking the model and we're not going to allow that to be required so you don't need a model or an axe to break the cable but it does make it go a little bit faster once we've done that we can go over to the advanced properties and set the uh, tick rate to one this will be important for actually making the uh, cables run on a tick basis so if we go down here you can see it's like slash t that means slash tick so per tick so we want to make sure that it's on per tick which is one tick per second or one tick per one twentieth of a second which is literally a tick so let's go ahead and set that up we might want to set the color of these cables too so in our case well my case uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the the cable to be black so it will be shown on black color on the map so it look more like a cable now for your AI pathfinding you probably want this blocked but it's not required to set it blocked if you don't want to and if you want to uh, make sure that the energy isn't lost you might want to make sure that the uh, cable itself is blocked most machines and crafting tables use this particular thing with pistons 
Um, if you want it to actually switch and be manipulated by sticky pistons or pistons, then you can leave it on normal and it will allow it to push and pull the thing. There's also some other options in here as well if you want to use those. In my case, I'm just going to block it because I don't want it to lose en any energy, even though it would probably be a low amount and regenerate quite quickly. So block entity, uh, we're going to want to, want to check this box and we want to make sure that um, that well literally this box is checked you don't need to do any of these additional things but I'm, I usually set the inventory to zero if I don't use an inventory and uncheck these two boxes you can leave them checked in the default settings if you want it shouldn't make any difference and then we want to go to energy and fluid storage make sure that you s enable the energy storage which is this block right here. And then you want to use this modular design for the cable tra transferring energy. So in our case, these are the three settings that we're gonna need. We're gonna need the cable capacity, maximum receive and maximum send. So basically we want all these to be 64. So 64, 64 and 64. This will be our, for all our cables, we can just clone this particular block and it will be set up automatically. Last thing that we need is our update tick. So we're gonna actually enable this and just clean up this name a little bit. So we're gonna be using this for all the cables. So we need to make sure that it's something that will match our low capacity cables. And then we're gonna save this procedure without doing any changes and it should be linked up like that. So generation, there's nothing that we need to do here and we're going to save. So once we've saved, uh, we can go ahead and duplicate this particular model. And we're going to go with the order that we have set up our cable names. So in this case, we want the E1 next. And we're going to work our way down. So E, and then we're going to want to set up our model. This is important to do before we generate the actual sizes. So we're going to select E for that. We're going to leave the rotation and all these other properties as well. Set the bounding box by clicking the generate. It might update a little bit differently. In this case, it was just the Z coordinate that updated. And all these other settings, uh, you might want to disable the inventory for these this block here. Uh, just so it's not in the inventory itself, but all these other settings you can leave the same. This is going to be required. Make sure that your um, cable is set up for the end model. Uh, if you do it now for this first uh, thing, when you duplicate this one from the to the I state, it will make it a lot easier because the only thing that you need to really do is the block state or the block bounding boxes and the model itself. So it saves a lot more time for making the blocks. Outside of that, all these other settings are set up already. So we can just save it. And then what we're gonna do is duplicate E. And we're gonna go with I. And then we're going to change the model to I. Go to bounding boxes, update the I model. So in this case, this one and this one have updated. We're going to save and we're going to do that for all the other ones. I'll be right back once this is done. Alrighty then. So we got all the different blocks set up. We got N, E, I, L, L, C, L, C, C, L, T, L, T, C, T, T, C, T, X, T, X, C, T, X, C, C, X, X, C, and F, and then finally S. So in that order, we want to basically import our blocks. Uh, the reason why uh, is will be very obvious in a little bit because it'll just make it easier for selecting the blocks and stuff. Now we're going to go to our update tick and we're going to go ahead and import a mod or a procedure that I created, which can be found in the workspace folder under procedures, cables, and then it'll be the main procedure right here. So uh, consider making your structure set up the same for your models and stuff like that. It'll make it easier for actually following this tutorial. So we're gonna use this one for our main update to, uh, procedure, and it's gonna be set up like this. So all the blocks are required. There's also notes, um, though the notes are a little bit compact. I'll probably try fixing that up a little bit later 
before I upload this video. So try to keep it a little bit more organized. So this is going to be our energy procedure. And then this is going to be our model update procedure. We're not going to link this up right now because it's not going to work. So we're going to just save it within the procedure itself. And then we can move on to that in a little bit. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually set up the energy script. So I'm going to create a new procedure. We're going to go low capacity uh, cable update tick. And if it turns red, that's good because then we know that we have the same name. I'm going to copy that and we're going to go energy. So this will be our energy script for that. Once we do that, we can go to our energy script folder and then import this particular one. Now, the only thing that you need to actually consider when making the names is you want the cables for the main name. This will allow you to have cross compatibility. If you go into the document and then scroll to the MBT names, uh, which are, uh, let's see here, cable block tags, MBT. So this basically gives some examples of how you can structure your name for cross mat mod compatibility. Uh, you want cables for the lower one. This should allow um, cross compatibility between cables and it doesn't have any other conflict with other blocks uh, for, you know, making sure that they're a device and stuff like that. And then you want to use capital letters for each additional word. So in this case, it's like capital T for two, capital T for three, capital F for four. And the first word is always lowercase. So lowercase. Uh, for the size, you want to make sure that there is a size for the cable as well. So this is like really important because the class down here is basically the size of cable. This will allow mods to know which cables can go to which cables. So um, having our class F like we have set up here is perfect perfectly fine. So another thing that you might want to do, uh, this is optional, but um, in some cases you might want to specify the material type. Um, maybe you don't want the material to cross over into say something like from copper to aluminum. Um, you can also add your material type here. Now this will kind of block other mods from you connecting to your actual system, but it will allow your mods to um, actually work together within certain materials so you can do that and then just make sure that the direction is after that so in our case it would be like cables f uh, the material type so this would be uh, gold in this instance and then the direction so north uh, you can also do it just cables our class for the size and then north and that would also work so those are the examples for the mbt variables i'm going to leave these ones the same because we're going to be making a copper cable anyways and it works fine with the size because we already have the size for the 64 which is class f so that's perfect it's already set up now if you want energy to basically drain each time it sends energy to another cable um, industrial craft did this uh, you can actually set this to a value higher than one so basic or higher than zero so one would basically drain the energy by one one uh, particular energy each time that it was transferred. You can adjust this to whatever. If you want to disable it, set it to zero and it will not, uh, it'll be for the exact same amount as it receives. So it has an inventory and then it will send the energy the same amount that it has. So if you want it to drain though, say you want one tick or one energy to drain each time it sends, then you can basically enable that to one or higher. So that's an, a, a new feature that you can basically add. All this down below is the new calculation for the script. Uh, you don't need to actually edit any of this. Uh, basically, it's just calculating the sides. It imports the variable conditions, which are basically these. Uh, we're testing for the MBT and the actual if it can receive energy for each side here. And then we're testing for the side, which is basically just those variables that we assigned it to. And we're increasing that number by one. And then we're basically going to divide that by the amount of sides. So our energy divided by the sides, and then we're going to go ahead. And for each direction, we're going to basically try to test send the amount. We're gonna get the amount that it can send. And we're gonna send that amount of energy to the 
um, particular side and then we're going to drain the same amount. Now this is where the energy loss comes in. Um, if you do set it to a higher number, it's going to subtract the um, energy that it sends by one. So basically it will subtract the energy, but it's going to still drain the same amount. So basically it removes it. And that's all the script that's basically going on here. So um, I shouldn't have deleted that. Whoops. Great. So once we've set this up, we can basically save and we're good for that one. I'm going to create a folder called energy uh, for this one just so it's in the same folder and we know where everything is. Uh, the next procedure we're going to need is our update tick for our model one. So models and this particular main one will cover all the model systems. So we're going to go ahead and create a new procedure and we're going to call this one models. And then we're going to import the model main procedure. So go back, model main procedure is in the model update folder. And we're going to need to update all of these particular ones for the size. Now we're going to need to create those sides first. So we're not going to link any of this up. We can set our blocks at the moment. Um, by default, when you import it, you can basically see the letter on the side here. You don't need to actually import or look into the, the name itself. But if you need to do that, then you can do that. Uh, we're going to just link up all the blocks quickly to our custom blocks. So we're going to start at the top here and as you can see everything is in the particular order that it needs to be filled out that's why we went in that particular order uh, when we made the blocks so we can just follow the blocks down um, for each one and we'll be able to set all these up in the same order now if that you ordered it a little bit differently then it's going to be a little bit different you're gonna have to probably search for it and all that other stuff but uh, in this case, I'm just going to quickly add all these blocks and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, that only took me a couple minutes or under a minute to actually add those blocks. So it doesn't actually take that much time to do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save that. Uh, make sure that it's not connected though. We didn't connect this up because we don't have the procedures, the call procedures link. So make sure that it's not attached or you'll probably get an error. Once you've done that, make a script file. Uh, we're going to want to go into our model file and then call script. And all our subscript for that procedure for those call blocks will be in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and models. And then we're going to make a directional based one in the same order that we created the blocks in. So in we would be our starting one. And before we do anything, we're just going to make all the variables. We're going to save these and then we can import them later. So like the procedures. So we're going to save and then go through the next one, which would be E. You might want to just save the <clears throat> variable up to um, models and then just type the letter after that. So E and then you want to do I and so on. So I'll do this for the next couple minutes. And then I'll cut back in when we're importing the actual models uh, procedures. All right, once we have all these particular ones up, uh, what these procedures will do is actually um, determine the rotation for all the different rotations and stuff like that for the particular models. So make sure that when you import them, you're importing the right one. Uh, we have subscript here, and then we want to match the letter of what we call their procedure to the procedure that it will be running. So in our case, this is going to be in, and we're going to need to link up our block for that as well. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the procedure or the block to our end block, and then make sure that our forged tag. This will help with the rotation for the particular cable. It uh, doesn't connect to our devices, only the forge cable MBT um, values do. So these will be uh, used for the machines. We'll cover that in the next, next week's tutorial on how to create a machine. Uh, we'll I'll probably go with a generator first and then we'll go into a battery and then finally a uh, machine itself. So there, those will be really important for uh, later on. So make sure these are set up uh, to what your tags were in your um, 
not the models one, but the energy script. So if we go back to our energy file folder procedure, it needs to be the same for these MBT ones. Now for the tag itself, uh, you want to put it under your mod namespace. So in this case, uh, this would be tail of biomes of biomes and then we would want cables and then the size and then very similar to how we have our cable or mbt set up uh, we would either want just the size or we could add the material type it doesn't matter if you add the material type or what but the size should allow for cross mod compatibility at the very least so make sure that this is all set up that way um, in this case, I can just basically copy this now because I don't need to worry about the name for updating the names. And down below, basically all this does is for each rotation of the model itself, it's going to be calculating all the sides and stuff like that. So it all automatically calculates all the sides and then replaces the block for the right side if there is the block that needs to be there and then sets the rotation automatically and also updates the variables to basically work with the cables itself so you don't need to worry about that part any of the minimized blocks you don't need to worry about you just need to worry about these ones up here the variables save this and then we can go ahead and go back to our models and update the next one and it's going to be the same per same system as before so we'll go to e we're going to import E and then we can go ahead and set up the block. So this one, and then we want to update our, basically our tag and our MBT. So make sure to do that. Uh, An easy way around this would be to go ahead and just move these things out of the way for the time being. And after you've basically created your first one, just export this save it in the same folder as where you're going to be importing from that's where the number came from and then what you want to do is just basically plop them back in the same order that they were so like this and then you can basically just use this as a template and i'll show you in the i1 what we can do with that so we can go ahead and import i and then we would want to move that to the side delete these ones and then import the variables that we exported so these ones like that and it's already set up for that the only thing that we need to do is update our block here and link that up so just like that that's the most efficient way that i've found of setting these up all right so i'm going to do that for all the other models and then we can finish up these tutorials all right, once you've got all the models updated, uh, we will need to create the tag now. So make sure that you go ahead and go back to one of those scripts and you want to grab the tag part from down here. We're gonna copy that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a tag. So in this tag, we're just gonna call it something like block tag. Tag cables F copper capital C like that. And then what we're going to do is replace this tag with the one that we copied. And we want to make sure that it's under mod. So this will automatically update the tag if you change your mod namespace. And then make sure that the tag type is blocks. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select all the ca cables in this particular category. So for all the cables that we added that tag to, we want to basically select the starting position down here then hold shift and then select the ending position. And then we'll be able to auto automatically sec select everything between. And then you're going to want to set use selected. So that will automatically import all the tags or the blocks here. And then we just need to save. So once we've done that, we have the tag now. Everything should work now. We just need to uh, go ahead and go to our main model script. And there's just one last thing that we need to do. And that is to make sure that all the different um, subscript models, the script that we added, 
are linked up to the call procedures in the same order. So make sure that all the letters match up. So you can basically start with uh, cable. And uh, if we go to the model N, so it would be that one in our case, and then we can just continue going along the line and then connect this up to the part. So let me do that. It'll just take a, like under a minute to do. All right, so once you've done that, you should have them all linked up like this, and you can just basically go ahead and drop that onto the main one. And then we're ready to link up both of these main procedures to our main update per tick procedure. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and select the energy script that we created. So we're going to need to go cable and we want the energy one right here. And then for the model one, we want cable and then models our main procedure for that. So once we've done that, we can basically link it up to here and save and all the blocks should compile fine if you get a compiling error chances are there is just a, a bug with the gradle you might be able to go ahead and try regenerating the code if it doesn't do that then you might need to go through the procedures to make sure that one of them isn't um, missing any of the steps that we covered in today so once we've done that uh, we can go ahead and just close out of any other parts and we'll start up the game and then i'll just show you that it works well I can't show you yet because we don't have the energy part, but uh, I can show you that the cables do connect. All right, so if we go under our mod um, tab for a creative tab and scroll down, we should see our low capacity cable. And to test to make sure all the models are actually set up, what we can do is basically just create a three by three by three grid and they should link up without any issues. If they don't do that, then you probably linked up the wrong procedure in one of the cases. So it should look exactly like this. If you look inside the cable, it should have a five or a, a six point in the middle. So as you can see, it's all set up perfectly fine in this case. So uh, the only suggestion that I have is take your time with designing the cables, like actually putting them together and stuff. Uh, if you follow the tutorial exactly the way that I did um, and use the PDF as a guideline, then you'll be able to easily make um, the cables cross mod compatibility like compatible and you'll be able to use um, a lot of your time without having a headache. And uh, you can also model the cables in Blockbench if you wanted to go that far and create different sizes of the cables if you wanted to. Uh, though I will only provide this particular size because it would be a headache for me to actually do make additional sizes for all the different kinds of cables and stuff. But um, outside of that, um, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Next week will be... Uh, how to create a generator. So we'll be tapping into this particular block. We'll be probably making a simple solar panel and we'll be generating um, the MBT or the energy to go through these cables for this particular size. So definitely tune in next week for that. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.